So my name is Mr. Gilchrist, for those of you that don't know me, uh, parents of freshmen or just new students in general. Um, I work with all of the bands and both of the orchestras here at Monta Vista High School. Uh, and I'm just going to be doing a little bit of a um, kind of rundown of some of the things that we are um, doing here at Monta Vista and some of the things to be aware of throughout the year uh, so that you can uh, keep informed uh, throughout all of the things that we do this year. Um, Tim, if you could go to the next slide, please. All right, so um, I'll try to keep the agenda as brief as possible. Um, thank you for your patience with the late start. We uh, had quite a crowd. Um, so just you know, getting everybody signed in uh, takes a little while. Uh, but if you didn't get a chance to sign in on your way in, uh, please do just go ahead and uh, sign out um, on your way out. So the agenda for this evening, um, we're going to be talking about a few different things. Firstly, expectations. Second, uh, important dates uh, for you to, um, to have down. Uh, also, instruments and materials, and lastly, outside opportunities that you may or may not be aware of um, that exist for your students here at Monte Vista in the Music Department. So before we get started, I just want to uh, give an acknowledgement that uh, we uh, passed a really important measure for performing arts uh, this past summer called Measure G. Um, so thanks to some of you um, out there who may have voted for that. Uh, we raised $275 million for performing arts. Uh, so $275 million were allocated um, towards uh, building and improving upon um, our performing arts facilities throughout the district. Um, I have been in talks with uh, the principal, Mr. Klausenser, about uh, ways that we can uh, best use those funds here at Monta Vista. Uh, and my primary uh, concern and the thing that I care most about is that we have great music facilities for our incredible music programs. We have some really outstanding uh, music programs, as you'll come to know, here at Monta Vista. Um, and I want to make sure that we get the best for our students not just a fresh new paint job. Um, so uh, thank you all uh, to those of you who voted on this bond measure and um, we're hoping to do great things with it. Okay, uh, firstly, a couple um, very important emails for you to be aware of. Um, so I want to give the caveat first that uh, we don't send out a ton of emails in the music department. But the ones that we do send out are very important, okay? Uh, we don't send out like a weekly newsletter or anything like that, because we know that you already get bombarded by lots of emails, um, especially at the start of the school year. So we try to keep it minimal, but uh, keep it very important uh, so that we don't waste your time and we don't fill up your email un inbox unnecessarily. So first of all, there's my email up there, just my first name underscore my last name at fuhsp.org. We also have new this year, um, our administrative uh, assistant for the music department back there running lights, um, that's Tim Yang, if you could just wait a moment. Uh, as many of you probably know, there's a lot more that goes into a music program than just teaching the students music and rehearsing. There's um, a lot of administrative tasks um, that go into uh, running a music department, so I'm lucky to have Tim here to help me with this. And also, another person whose emails you should watch out for is our booster president. Uh, this year's booster president is uh, Stephanie fulmer uh sitting right over there. <laughs> Stephanie has done an incredible amount um, the last three years that I've been here um, as our booster president. But sadly, um, her uh, son is a senior this year, so we are going to be looking for some new uh, um, motivated booster parents uh, that can help us out, and uh, she'll talk a little bit more about that later. So first, we're gonna start with expectations, and I won't take too much time on this, but I want you to be aware of a couple things. So first of all, um, practice is a really important, uh, important part of growing as a musician. So I say that um, students should practice regularly 30 minutes every single day, okay? And uh, that's kind of, the floor, the ceiling can go much higher um, depending on the student and how ambitious they are with music. Um, for example, I would recommend uh, if a student is in or looking to be in one of our upper uh, division ensembles like chamber orchestra or wind um, ensemble, uh, then I would suggest 
that number be a little bit closer to one hour. And something that I get asked often is, um, you know, Mr. G, if I missed the, uh, if, I, if I didn't practice for like two days, can I just make that up and practice an hour and a half the next day? And unfortunately, it doesn't really work like that. Um, it's kind of like, you know, um, working out. Um, you need to make sure that it's something you do consistently, not just, you know, splurge every now and then. So, uh, next thing. Uh, next, we have materials. So uh, we're going to talk a little bit about more about that later. But materials are really important for our students to have. Not just um, that they have an instrument that functions and can play notes, but um, a lot of instruments need supplies. You know, saxophones need reeds and uh, brass players need valve oil and uh, stuff like that to keep uh, things functioning. String players need strings. Right? Those break from time to time. So making sure that students come prepared to rehearsal every day uh, with these materials is really important. And lastly, I have attendance. Okay, so um, this is specifically in the context of outside of school rehearsals. We, uh, of course, expect that students attend during school rehearsals uh, as it is part of their regular schedule. But um, I have a policy in place uh, that students need to let me know at least two weeks out from uh, any potential conflict they may have for one of their performances. Um, again, this is one of those things where we don't schedule a lot of outside of uh, school rehearsals or performances. But everyone that we do schedule is incredibly important. And a, a single student missing uh, you know, a, a big performance can really have a profound impact on the sound of the ensemble. Um, and you know how successful uh, everybody else is in that group. So um, there's actually a form that I have on our Google Calendar, which you can find on our website, uh, or sorry, b below our Google Calendar on our website, um, that is just a uh, prior commitment form outlining um, you know what the conflicts are. And I do ask that students fill that out um, two weeks before any kind of major conflict. Okay, and moving on. So another thing that I want you to be aware of is a uh, software that we have uh, that we use as our administrative software for the music program. It's called Cut Time. Um, so um, students are all, or at least they should all, be registered in that system. And uh, we use it to check out instruments to students, so we make sure that we get back the same instruments that we check out. We have, I think, 350 instruments um, that we have uh, inventoried in the music program. And, it's easy to lose track of them if we don't have a good system. Um, so we have uh, cut time for that. We also have cut time to manage any kind of financials uh, for students. You know, say, you know, marching band contributions, contributions for other ensembles. Uh, we'll also be managing our Midwest payments through that, um, just to kind of keep track of everything. So uh, the first thing that you can do, uh, because parents can also sign up for this, and I do really encourage you to sign up um, so that you can um, actually uh, uh, understand what your, your student uh, has on their plate um, as far as um, inventory checked out to them, as far as music checked out to them, stuff like that. So the first thing that you'll do is go to cuttime.net and you'll just go ahead and click at the top of the screen, uh, student slash parent sign up after that. Um, you're going to go ahead and choose for your subscribing school, Monta Vista High School Music, okay? And then third, after you do that, is for your position, you're going to go ahead and list yourself as a parent or guardian, okay? Um, so that just lets us know that you don't end up with the students. Sometimes, um, you know, parents will sign up, they'll sign up as a student, and it just leads to some confusion. Like, okay, I don't know who this person is, but it has the same, they have the same last name as someone else. Um, and then you just go ahead and log in and make sure that you are linked to your student's account um, so that you can see kind of their financials. Um, you know, if an instrument breaks or needs repairs, there's actually a really great tool in there to uh, request repairs on the instrument if it's a school-owned instrument. And that will let myself and Tim know that we need to take that into the shop and get it repaired so the student can uh, resume playing. Next up, we've got some important dates for you to uh, keep track of. And again, we do have a uh, Google Calendar on our website, which I'll be sharing the link to later. Um, I would highly recommend subscribing to this so that we can just uh, keep track of all these dates. N uh, nothing big falls through the cracks, right? Um, but you can see up there, we've got some uh, uh, 
uh, football games that uh, some of the band students will be attending. We've got a few concerts. We've got Midwest, which I'll be talking about shortly, and a few other things. The Sonoma Invitational is just uh, just pertains to students in an ensemble and chamber orchestra. And there are a couple events that are still kind of uh, TBD as far as the date goes. But there's your ballpark estimate. So can we just keep it under for a couple seconds? Going once, twice, and next. Okay. Uh, next, something that I want to talk about is uh, something very special that we are uh, extremely privileged to be doing this year, which is um, attending the Midwest uh, Band and Orchestra Conference uh, with the Chamber Orchestra. So, the Monta Vista uh, High School Chamber Orchestra auditioned last year on this very stage um, to perform at this conference, and um, you know, we were accepted as one of only five high schools in the country to actually be accepted. So that's an incredible achievement. I think it's really good. Uh, um, so out of all of the all of the hundreds of orchestras that applied, we were one of the uh, only five. Um, the conference is actually the biggest music education conference in the world, with um, over eighteen thousand annual attendees uh, from over thirty countries. Um, so. The timeline for uh, for this uh, trip is December 17th to the 22nd, so um, you know it's a, a few nights in Chicago, uh, Illinois, and um, yeah, the approximate cost is $2,200. Um, so um, the students who are coming along on this, uh, we do ask uh, that they they contribute towards the cost. Um, and you should have also, if you are a parent of a chamber orchestra student, you should have received an email um, on Friday with some of, some more of those details as far as you know what that money goes towards. Um, it goes towards a lot, not just flights and hotel accommodations, but also um, getting to see a performance by the Chicago Symphony Orchestra, doing a lot of uh, sightseeing and meals and stuff like that in Chicago. Um, and as most of us uh, hopefully know, who are parents of chamber orchestra students, uh, the first payment was due on Monday. Uh, however, if you are one of the few, um, you know, who has not turned in a payment yet, please do reach out to myself or uh, Tim. Um, you know, whatever the case is, if the student's, you know, not interested, or if the student, uh, or if you simply uh, feel that you cannot afford it. Uh, just please do reach out. Uh, we would love to know and we'd love to try to find some sort of solution so that everybody can go. Uh, also, a really important announcement, okay? If you are interested in chaperoning, please reach out to me. Uh, we're still looking for about three, maybe four more chaperones. So if you could please uh, shoot me an email um, or shoot Tim an email for that matter. Um, I would love to get in touch with you so that we could uh, get that sorted out. Chaperones will be um, receiving a discounted rate. We can't pay for the whole trip, uh, but you will receive a discounted rate. And the same for the lead chaperone, which will be um, a bigger discounted rate. And um, again, please see Friday's email uh, for details if you are a chamber orchestra parent. Next up, pep band. Um, so this is a, uh, kind of a new thing that we are doing this year um, to get more students involved in something that I think is a really important part of uh, being in band in high school. So uh, students who are registered for a band class are um, have been assigned either to pep band A or pep band B. And uh, this, by the way, you can actually see on their pep time account um, who is pep band A, who is pep band B. Um, and Students who are not in marching band um, are going to either go to um, the A games or the B games. Okay, so two games for um, for um, basically everybody who's not in marching band. Marching band students, of course, will be at all of the games um, because they play at the halftime show. Um, so. And next up, I'm going to talk a little bit about materials. Okay, not too much because there's a lot of them. Um, but something that I really want you to all be aware of is that we provide uh, instruments to all students completely free of charge. The only thing that we ask 
is that um, it gets returned to us in a working condition, okay? Um, and if we uh, have to do some light repairs, that's, that's okay, right? We, uh, we budget for that. Um, however, if the instrument's lost or broken beyond repair, um, then we ask you to, um, to pay us back to the value of the instrument or to replace the instrument itself. Um, but yes, we, uh, we do have instruments available for all students. And um, you will uh, be receiving a contract if you did receive one of these instruments, basically just stating what I said. Um, and if you could please sign off on that and turn it into either myself, actually, uh, turn it into Tim. I think that would be better. So you can go ahead and send that over to uh, Tim Yang back there. Just a brief overview of instrument supplies. Um, so, you know, it can get pretty detailed instrument to instrument. So I've provided actually a full list um, on our website. Um, so if you wanna see for, you know, instrument materials for band um, or instrument materials for orchestra and you wanna see some specific recommendations, you can view it there. Um, but this is uh, kind of an overview of what we do require for each instrument. So. Um, for orchestra, we require that students have a, um, a clip-on tuner. This is specifically for uh, string orchestra, we require it. Chamber orchestra, it's more of a suggestion. Okay. Uh, we also um, ask students to provide their own rosin, replacement strings, and a cleaning cloth to wipe down uh, the surface of the instrument so that it doesn't get all kind of junky with rosin. Uh, for band, we have a different kind of tuner. This is a tuner that actually has a wire and a pickup. Um, they're a little bit more expensive than the uh, orchestra tuners, so we provide them for the students uh, for rental, um, you know, again, for free. Uh, so we don't charge any cost, we just make sure that uh, we get them back at the end of the year. Um, students are also going to be required to get a flip folder. It's one of these uh, little things that, uh, that's very important for pet band. Um, and an instrument liner. Um, also, besides that, there's um, a bunch of the uh, instrument-specific materials for band that I can't go into right now because it would take uh, a million years, but um, you can uh, check that out on our website under the band page. Okay, moving right along uh, into some outside opportunities. So there are lots of things that students can do with music in uh, the Monta Vista Music Program, but there's also a lot of things that they can do outside of it. So within the music program, um, we offer uh, not only our classes, but we have marching band, which is actually rehearsing right now. Um, we have uh, winter percussion, winter guard, jazz band. We have a symphony orchestra. Uh, that we uh, started up last year as well. So we've got lots of things on the go. But uh, for students looking for something else, um, I just want to make these aware to you. So for students uh, seeking an extra challenge, we have a few different um, opportunities. First of all, we have honors ensembles. So uh, these are things that are hosted every single year. So we have uh, for band, the county honor band which is a really incredible ensemble of musicians from all across the county, audition to take part in this. Um, auditions are usually held in early December, um, with the performance uh, usually happening in January. I think it's January this year. Um, and then we also have Allstate. Um, so, you know, we had, I think it was uh, 12, no, it was 18, I think, students uh, participate in Allstate this past year, which is really incredible. Um, and uh, so basically, it's just like it says, um, you know, it's students from all across the state uh, come to take part in this performance that happens once a year um, in February, and they get to play some incredible music um, that they learn in just a weekend and just put together. It's really incredible um, to be a part of. Um, I work pretty closely with both of these groups, um, and you know, it's just really uh, an amazing thing to witness. Uh, so I highly recommend your students audition for those. We're also hosting a concerto competition, uh, November 16th, 2022, right here in the Monta Vista Auditorium. Last year we hosted it uh, in combination with Lindbrook High School. This year uh, we're kind of doing it solo. Um, but basically that's a really great opportunity for a student to, um, you know, who maybe, you know, is, has been working on a concerto for a while with a private uh, teacher, or maybe they're just ambitious and they learned it on their own, which is awesome. 
Um, but basically, the winner of that concerto competition gets to play as a featured soloist with our symphony orchestra. Uh, it's a really awesome opportunity. Um, and lastly, I have a few or youth orchestras, rather, um, listed at the bottom there that students can participate in. Uh, some of the uh, noteworthy ones in the area, CYS, California Youth uh, Symphony, San Francisco Symphony Youth Orchestra, the California Philharmonic Youth Orchestra, San Jose Youth Symphony, and Golden State Youth Orchestra. They provide students a really great opportunity to play regularly with a group. Um, most groups uh, rehearse once or twice a week, and they play extremely high-level music, uh, but it's a really cool thing to be a part of. Next up, I just want to talk briefly about private lessons and why I think they are very important. So uh, just a couple stats up there on the board um, or on the contractor screen. Uh, so we currently have 43% of our students currently enrolled in private lessons. Um, and we have 51% who have indicated that they're interested in taking private lessons. Um, so private lessons are something that can really help take your student uh, to the next level if they are trying to participate in one of these things like Allstate or uh, a youth orchestra uh, or something of that sort. Um, or if a student feels like, you know, maybe they're, uh, they need a little extra help, that's, an, that's also a great reason to uh, get private lessons. Private lessons are highly recommended by me um, regardless of, uh, you know, the student's experience level. It will always pick them up a notch uh, with their playing. So. Um, so I have some recommendations um, on our website, um, and you can actually, um, I have a whole list of uh, teachers for every single instrument uh, that I would recommend. They're all high-level professionals, people who have been playing and mastering their instrument for years, sometimes decades, uh, with advanced degrees, like masters and doctorates in these, uh, these fields. So um, really highly recommend that you check out one of those um, if your student is interested in getting private lessons. And next up, I'd like to welcome to the stage um, our Music Booster President, uh, Stephanie Fulmer Smentek. Thank you, John, and thanks everyone for coming out. I appreciate it. Um, great, thanks. Just a little bit about the Modernist and Music Boosters Association. I won't read you the whole slide. I took most of it from our bylaws and our, our mission, but basically, this is a parent-run organization, and our sole, <laughs> primary and sole purpose is to support the music program here at Monta Vista. And we do that primarily through financial contributions and through contributions of our time. So it's, it's a fully volunteer organization, um, and I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about some of what we do, but one of the things that I personally am passionate about in, that I think is an important way to support the music program is by building community. So one of the reasons I'm really happy to see everyone here today because you are welcome for those new parents, for those parents who've been here before, welcome back. You are part of the Mata Vista Music community and that is like one of the best things, I just gotta say. So <laughs> anyway, so, uh, Tim, if you can go to the, the next slide. And being part of the community, we need you. So I am here specifically today with two specific asks. One, and I'm gonna talk a little bit more about how you can help us on both of these. The first is we need your financial support. Um, you know, one of the ways that we support the music program is through funding. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about some of the things that we do fund. And I have a lot more detail for anyone who's interested, but we, we buy instruments, we help um, pay for some of those instrument repairs, we pay for outside clinicians who come in and help. Basically anything that the district does not provide for the music program, uh, almost anything, the music boosters is the one who are providing it. Um, few minor exceptions when we can get squeak out money from other sources, but, but typically it is, it is the music boosters. Um, the other thing we need is your time. We're not asking for a lot of time, I'm not asking every one of you to step up and become the next Music Booster president. I'm only asking one of you to do that. <laughs> I just don't know which one of you it is yet. Um, anyway, but all joking aside, you know, it's, it's 
the involvement of the parents that helps make this a, a community. And I think those of you who, you know, we had a really great meeting yesterday of some volunteers for the Marching Man program. Can, anyone who's been involved in that can, can attest to that as well. Um, Timothy, move on. So, oh, I changed my slide. Okay, so uh, speaking about money, we have three main fundraisers that we run throughout the year. The first is our membership drive. And that is starting today. You guys all hopefully got a little slip of paper. If you didn't, there's some on the music stands in the back. On that, there's a QR code that you can you can link to and join our membership drive. If, I'm hoping that this maybe is animated. It's not animated. I'm sorry, Stephanie. Gosh darn it. Where did the rest of my things go? I don't know. Okay, so I'm just going to have to talk through the other things. Um, the second fundraiser, so the, the thing I want to point out about our membership drive is this is the simplest and easiest way that the Music Boosters collects um, support from the parent community. So we would like as many parents as possible, ideally 100%, to join at whatever level makes sense for them. And all the money that we collect for that, 100% goes directly to Music Boosters. Small caveat, if you do do it by PayPal, there's a very small amount that they take. But pretty much 100% of that money comes directly to Music Boosters. The second one, which would be in that middle column there, <laughs> is our Poinsettia fundraiser. Uh, this is basically, we ask the students to go out and sell poinsettias to their family, their neighbors, local businesses, their friends, their teachers. It's really kind of a fun community building fundraiser. It's the only thing we're gonna ask them to go out and sell, but it's really been pretty successful in the past. And I don't know if you can see, I put a nice graph there, but it sort of turned invisible and it shows you where all the different, um, where all the different income is. So yeah, that one that, that Tim's pointing at right there, that's our poinsettia fundraiser. <laughs> um, so what we ask for you from that is basically encourage your kids to go out and sell, sell and then we'll be asking for a little bit of your volunteer time to help us count the orders and help distribute the, uh, the plants. Uh, the third one, which is also missing, uh, and that, that runs in November and December. The third one, which is also miss missing, is our Vertical Raise fundraiser. This is a new one that we started last year. It was extremely successful. Um, this is a social media fundraiser. It's run by Vertical Raise. It's a third party company, so they do take a cut. But this is basically using social media to generate small dollar donations from a broader swath of donors. So we're not necessarily asking you to contribute to the vertical race, but when your student come home and says, mom, can I have Aunt Josie's email address? You say, yes, here's her email address so that she can get a ping and contribute to the Modernist Music Boosters. Um, so one note on this graph, and since you can't see all the things, um, I just wanna comment that we, uh, John mentioned a bunch of other extracurricular programs that we run marching band and that we support winter percussion winter guard those are all funded sep not separately they're all supported by music boosters but those are funded by the families that participate in those programs so when you're contributing your membership that's not money that's flowing into marching band that's money that's flowing into the things that support the curricular classes I just think it's important that sometimes people get confused, like, oh, I gave money for marching band. Yes, that's great, we love those marching band contributions. That goes to support marching band. If you contribute to membership, it goes to support things like the instruments and the clinicians that come in to the curricular classes. So, um, yeah, so I didn't include it in that graph because it makes it look confusing. So how can you get involved? Number one, join Music Boosters. You can do it today. You have a QR code there, I put it up there. I am sure that Mr. Gilchrist will send out a follow-up email in which you can all get the website from there too. Attend a monthly Music Booster meeting. We meet about, we meet once a month. Typically it's the second Wednesday of every month. Our first one is gonna be in, in person, most likely in the band room, could be in the choir room. Uh, and that'll be on September 14th. And again, Mr. Gilchrist will send out an email to let you all know of the time and place for that meeting. You can volunteer at a Music Boosters event. This could be those poinsettia sales I mentioned. Chaperoning the Midwest trip, excellent experience. I have had the opportunity to chaperone two music trips and they have been some of the best experiences that I've had. So I highly recommend chaperoning that trip if you have a student in chamber orchestra or maybe even 
and if you don't, and just want to go to Chicago in December. Um, <laughs> Uh, or, or if your student's involved in one of our extracurricular groups, those groups always need help, whether it's marching band, which takes a, takes a village, winter percussion. So there's always opportunities to help out there. And then lastly, you can join our board. We do not ask for a whole lot of time, but we cannot function without our, our Music Boosters board. And we have several positions that are open this year and one, I think, and a couple that will be open next year because they're being held by parents who have graduating seniors like myself. Um, so this is our, our current board. Uh, I am the president. I have been president of this organization for um, a long time. <laughs> my, my old, I, I joined um, when my older child was a junior in high school and she is now a junior in college. Um, so we definitely need a shadow for me for this year. I would love to have someone who step up and say, hey, I'm kind of interested. Can I kind of learn from you while you're still here? I think that's a great idea. Our VP of fundraising, and she's in the back there, I see her. Um, uh, we have a treasurer, but she is acting at this point, she's last year's treasurer, she's acting as in an interim basis. We are desperately in need of a new treasurer um, to, to follow out this year, ideally any of those freshman, sophomore, junior parents with any sort of financial background, we would love to have you. Or it's also a job that can be shared. Um, our secretary, Sandy, is, she's a color guard parent. She is also the parent of a senior, so we will need a new secretary next year. We are looking for a membership chair. And we also have a volunteer coordinator, Sarah. I think I saw her here, too. So in any case, that is, that is the board. And with that, I am happy to answer any questions, either afterwards, or you can email me, or flag me down at the marching band, whatever it is that, that you want to do. Okay? Okay, and what a coincidence, I have... Oh, no. <laughs> oh, all right. Never mind. We only have... One question, this is fine. Um, so at this point, um, we basically have, um, we have told you everything that um, I am burning to tell you, um, but I'd love to answer any questions that you may have about our program um, before we close out tonight. So any questions at all? Either for myself, or Stephanie, or Tim even. Is the Chicago trip the only trip? Um, the Chicago trip is the only major trip that we're taking this year, um, but we do uh, plan to have a major international trip every four years, um, most likely in combination with uh, Lindbrook High School, uh, which is how we did our last one. Great Britain. Anything else? Any other questions? Yes. Yeah, so um, that's a great question. So um, none of the uh, events on that schedule are specific to marching band. Uh, we actually have a separate calendar for our marching band rehearsals, but just because there's so much else that they, um, that, you know, that we, uh, that we have marching band students doing. So <laughs> just going back in time for a second. Okay, uh, yeah, so, um, the football games, um, as I mentioned earlier, are for all band students, not just for marching band students. But we do have that separate marching band calendar um, available on our website. Any other questions? And feel free to take a photo. Exactly. So the music department calendar is all the curricular stuff. Marching band is just people who are marching. Band. That's what I've written. Yes. Yes. Oh, 
Um, so the Chamber Orchestra is going on the uh, Midwest trip this year, but um, this past summer we did a, uh, a trip with our bands to, uh, to the United Kingdom. Um, so it kind of depends on what we, um, you know, we have another tour planned. Uh, I don't want to spoil it, but we uh, have another international tour planned in, uh, for 2026. Um, and um, that's most likely going to be both band and orchestra students available for you. Any other questions? Oh, yes, so the 55% was the, um, the super majority um, vote that was needed to pass um, uh, the Measure G. Uh, we actually just made it at 55.2%. Um, so it was a little stressful for a, about a week while they were finishing counting votes, and it looked like we were just under, but fortunately, we nearly made it. Yes? So will you send out the slide later in the email? Absolutely. One hundred percent. Yeah, I'll be sending out the slides and also a recording if you want to reference anything that we went over during this um, during this meeting. Anything else that I can answer for? You? Yes. Absolutely. Yes, we do provide um, string instruments. Um, so our cellos and our basses. Are, um, are available during class for students to use so that they don't have to take back and forth their instruments, uh, or they can check one out for at home as well if they need one. Um, we do have violins and violas. I will, I will be the first to admit that not all of them are quite up to snuff uh, as far as um, I would like for our program. Um, so we do have a few uh, really nice instruments mixed in there, but um, that's one of the areas that I'm looking to kind of upgrade a bit when we have the funds to do so. Anything else I can help you guys out there? Yes? Fantastic question. Yes, um, we are actually going to have cellos and basses provided to us uh, by the conference. Uh, so students do not need to bring their own. Um, Students have the option to bring their own. Well, I'll say their own cello. I don't think we'd be able to take a bass. Um, but they would have to check it, and there would be a separate cost associated with that. So I would recommend all students who are uh, playing cello and bass on the tour to just use the uh, tour instruments. Yes? That's a great question. Um, so a lot of the smaller instruments, um, typically like clarinet and flute, trumpet even, um, I typically recommend students purchase their own because they're not terribly expensive and they'll last them a very long time um, if it's a good model. Um, but yes, we do absolutely offer instruments like oboes, bassoons, stuff like that, um, uh, would, that tend to be more expensive uh, woodwind instruments. Oh, the reeds themselves. Um, so we do not provide the reeds. The reeds do have to be purchased. That's one of those supplies that I ask uh, students to provide. Um, so uh, double reeds, I know, can be expensive. Um, but uh, you know, if you take care of them right, and I'm teaching students ways to do that, um, they can last you for a long time. Anything else that I can help you guys out with? Yes, absolutely. In fact, I highly encourage students to take their instruments home, especially over the weekends, especially over breaks, um, so that they can um, get a chance to practice regularly. We just hope that they bring them back to class afterwards so they don't say, oh, I forgot my instrument home. Yes, uh, so this is a bit of a side from instruments, but um, I just want to bring this up because it came to my mind uh, a lot. I know a lot of companies do donation matching, and uh, I went to actually went to Lindbergh's parent meeting a few weeks ago, and a lot of parents didn't know that their companies did matching for specific donations. So I would definitely check on that because um, 
Matching is great, and it gets us more money. goes a really long way. 